I'm sort of, um, you might know my Twitter handle. It's sort of, it's that. I don't know if you can see it on the back of the phone. Um, but this is a sort of iconic prop, which I started to use in about 2011. Um, just after I started, when we were trying to work out what people were trying to do with the technology in government. And we ran um, a controls process, which allowed us to see what people wanted to do. And we kept on coming across these enormously complex programs which sounded fantastic, and in terms of if you were a vendor, they sounded amazing, and it was full of things, the precursors of whatever that bimodal stuff was. Um, and um, we just used to ask, what is the user need? And this question seemed to stop everybody in their tracks. And it actually made us think an enormous amount about why that was an appropriate question, but also it became almost the most important question in everything that we did, was what is the user need? cut through an enormous amount of complexity to focus on what's there. And I'll give you a bit of an example of that later on. Um, there are sort of three great examples I've brought. Um, but we have these stickers. I very happily make them available <coughs> to lots of people. They're really helpful because it helps you identify where you're going. Um, so I'm Liam Maxwell. I work for um, the British government. I'm, uh, I'm part of the team. So it's, it really isn't just me. It's a lot of it's a lot of very good people that I work with. And one of the things someone said earlier was, how do you make it work? Well, surround, your place, surround yourself with people that are much more intelligent and better than you. And I'm lucky because I've got that. Um, we're building a digital government based on user needs. That's what we do. And um, that's a very clear focus. And we're going to talk a bit about leadership. Um, I'm from the British government. In 2010, we spent 1% of the economy on IT. I'm able to quote things from my minister that I couldn't possibly say myself. So Francis Maud says um, quite happily these days that in 2010 the IT delivery in the British government, it was a byword for crap. <laughs> and I think we were all too polite to say it a long time ago, but he's fairly clear about that. It's not anymore. Next week we have we convene five of the top digital governments in the world are coming to London. Um, obviously, Estonia is one of them, um, but South Korea, Israel, New Zealand, and um, Estonia are coming with us to not share best practice, to do best practice. We're sharing people, we're sharing code. We are making that open source pledge that we made very early on come to life. If you've ever been to gov.nz, you'll think that looks a bit like gov.uk. There's a reason for that. We share these things. We're able to, because generally we don't compete with other organisations. Nobody competes with us to put people in prison in this country, I hope. Uh, nobody competes to raise tax, I hope. Um, so we are able to do that. But lots had to change, and we're, we were in a situation where it was unsustainable in 2010. And um, just some thoughts about that are that we built an entire... The civil service, I mean, people talk about how old the business has been around. We've been going since 1688. And the civil service has designed itself to be in silos. Okay? There are all these silos around. I mean, almost by legislation, there are silos. You have an accounting officer and everything the accounting officer needs to be responsible for. So it's difficult uh, because, as you probably realize, in government, even in one government, we do lots of things the same way. We all have publishing. We do the same way. Um, we had 1,500 websites. They all had one thing in common. They had nothing in common. And we had to make sure that they all worked together and actually became one thing which was based around that principle. That why do you build a website that's based around the department? Because the citizen doesn't care. The citizen just thinks it's the government. Why do we have multiple ways of signing into government when you can have a common platform approach to that? That's the most exciting product, I think, and service we've put together, the Verify platform. And there's a fairly unremarked civil servant called Chris Ferguson who has done an amazing amount of work on that to make that a reality. Verify is now in public beta, and you can sign up. Um, we got a minister to sign up last week, which was really good. Good news, bad news, wasn't Francis. I haven't, I haven't told him yet. Um, but we are getting um, people signing up to that. Um, but make it simpler. Do less. We were so good at doing more. I'm working on a program at the moment that has so many people running around doing things, and it's so complex. Everything's meant to be complex. It's not. So much of the time what you can do is design things more clearly, 
make it simpler. It becomes faster for the citizen. It works for the user. And the biggest weapon you have as that, as a leader, is peer review. Now, you may see things in the press or you may see pictures of you come to offices and everyone goes, oh, GDS, it's just a whole load of people writing post-its on the wall. There's a really important thing about writing things on walls. We don't hide things in spreadsheets. We write on the wall because that opens up what we say to peer review. That Someone can sit there and go, I wouldn't do that that way. Who's doing this? Can we talk about it? We work as a collective. We work on peer review. But we have clear principles, which peer review has given us. Digital by default. There is a digital by default service standard, which every service has to make. We have a set of red lines. So you'll probably, you, if you read the budget document or the autumn statement document today, you'll see that we don't do projects over £100 million. We don't have hosting contracts to go on for more than two years. Why would you? The price drops every 18 months. Why would you ever do that? We want technology that's as good in the office as you get at home. That's really important because otherwise everyone's going to go into a shadow IT world. Why would you ever do that? And base things on some things we need to be done effectively. So rather than having some massive target of how many people go do one thing or another... I was set this challenge by my, ch by my minister. To, uh, he wanted everybody to be able to share the same documents. He wanted everybody to be able to share their diaries. We couldn't do this before. We are getting to the stage now where we can do that. We now have a platform approach to those, which has gone into two departments already and is growing. Because we used to have absolutely identical IT systems in departments, but they're in departments. So Denise in the Home Office, one of my great heroes in government IT, Denise McDonough, and I couldn't share our um, diaries because we were in the same system, but same company. Couldn't do it. Couldn't do it because it had been bought and delivered as a silo. We were siloed by design. We were siloed by procurement. We are delivering government now as a platform. There are platform plays out there. We should do it. We should be like the Estonians and make sure that if something's out there already and it's good, we should use it. and We shouldn't reinvent it. Think about booking a prison visit. Very similar to booking an appointment to go somewhere, to go and meet a GP. It's very like booking a meeting to go and meet a tax advisor. All of these things. Booking. Booking is something the internet solved 15 years ago. How come the government invented 85 different ways of doing it? <laughs> Let's just stop. Seriously, stop. Make it simple. Use what's there. And have the skills to build new things where you need to. And use the best. Now, you may know that we have... Um, a policy that we will work with the best people. We have a procurement approach which is meant to deliver that. We introduced a new procurement framework a few years ago, which Tony Singleton was one of the notes I saw there. Tony Singleton OBE, I should say, because Tony got his OBE not just for long service in the civil service, but for helping make sure the G Cloud became a really effective force. Over £300 million of our spending is now through the G Cloud. Essentially, all the new tech goes through that. And 54% of that is with small businesses. Now, we were set a target of 25% by the Prime Minister, so 54 is a good number. But it means that we're actually having a level playing field. We're going after the best solutions, and it means that we can have small businesses delivering services just as well as we can have large businesses. It is difficult sometimes. There are ways that government has made that difficult for itself, but we are going through that really like a knife through butter at the moment. People really want to work with us on that. Get clarity. I wrote down five words here which sort of come across every time I speak. Agile, waterfall, scrum, security, procurement. This is the five horsemen of the apocalypse of dealing with government <laughs> IT. Agile, as I, last year I talked about having been confronted with this word, agilution. Um, which was uh, sort of, we'd like to do agile, but we'll do it, you know, complete misinterpretation. We'd like to do agile, but slowly. Um, <laughs> I got people saying Wagile at me, which is um, <coughs> Waterfall's approach to Agile. Um, I've had people having an Agile approach to developing um, technical requirements. Um, <laughs> Work that one out. Um, you know, it became this amazing word which people used, and Waterfall became this bad word. Look, as Simon Wardley is very clear, we have um, uh, Agile works in some areas, Six Sigma works in some areas. Make it work together. Just get out of the dogma. Make it clearer for yourself to do it. Get the security out of the way. Security so long has been a difficult thing. I remember talking once to a bunch of security consultants in York at their annual convention. It's a 
weird enough as it is. And they, um, I, got crit- I stood up and said the civil servants should use Twitter. I got criticised for that, roundly, by most of the audience. Guess where? On Twitter. <laughs> Start making sure that you can do these things. Do things at size. Do things at the size that work for them. There's a famous story when we tried to put in an anti-fraud system, and we worked out it wasn't all that big. And this very long-haired developer sat there and said, oh, do you know, that's not very big. And people said, no, it's government, it's big, it's enormous. Well, government isn't actually that big. Um, our transaction rates are, you know, half an hour on Twitter. And this guy sat there and said, you know, it's, it's not very big. And they said, what have you ever done that's big? Well, it was Blaine Cook, he was the lead coder on Twitter. It was sort of difficult. He said, you know, you sort of might have heard of us. Government isn't that big. And make sure that you procure in the right way. So two examples. At the moment, I'm working on the um, Rural Payments Agency. And that's a way of getting a payment to a farmer. Now, there's masses and masses and masses of European legislation about this. There's some weird thing I discovered yesterday about pigs, parishes, and boundaries, which I don't understand yet, but I'm sure it makes sense. But the big thing I know is that farmers don't need to know about that. They don't need to know that. We don't need to give that complexity to them. So we're making things simpler. Make it simpler and design it around your user. Carers' allowance, we put forward, uh, I think we took out 180 questions from their questionnaire. Imagine that, 180 questions you didn't need to have. There are some services I've been working on where, you, where the design of it, you're asking people things that they don't know. We do, but they don't. Why are we doing that? We just need to make it simpler, clearer, faster. That makes services that work for people. I remember one service, just to give you an example of how crazy it can get, which had question five, are you pregnant? Question nine, are you a woman? <laughs> got to design this thing with peer review design it around the user and don't do it all yourself you can't now look i've just to sum up everyone's been talking here it's been a sort of pitch in many ways it's been a very subtle undercurrent there to go and work for network rail or to go and work for the post office <laughs> which are lovely organizations um we in a situation now where we take decisions much more quickly we take decisions much more effectively and people's views on what they can do are based on much more and much more effective um, uses of data. And we've got a sensible approach to this. We've got excellent technology leadership um, in the political class now. There are some people who really know what's going on. If you read the speeches of, um, say, John Cruddus or Michael Duger or Francis Maud or Chia Mama, you'll notice there are people there who know what they're doing. We've got great technology leadership in government. We've got a civil service which is aiming at delivering digital government. We have a chancellor who's just announced that we've got to do it because there's no money left in that space and we need to get savings. It's a great time to go and work in the public sector, I have to say. I was saying to someone earlier, I've got friends who've got boring jobs that pay well. I can promise you neither of those. (laughs) But if you like delivery and if you like working on things that matter... And if the opportunity for a nation-scale cock-up being within your grasp is something that you like, (laughs) we've got a great gig. (laughs) And there are some really good people working for us in government now, and we've moved away from it being the ship of the doomed for technology that exported everything for 25 years. We exported our leadership. And now we've got leadership back in. And what that means is that if you are a leader and you want to affect people, and you want to work with great people, come and work with us. It's a great place to work, and it's about the only place I can see where you can affect that change at that speed. And it's fun. Thank you.